Hey everyone, Jeremy Gerard from Mythic Customs here with one of my short customizing tutorial videos. Today's video, we're gonna talk about making tribute figures with your Mythic Legions custom. So what I mean by this is actually making Mythic Legions customs that are based on some other character that's out there in pop culture, be it a comic book or a movie or a book or a video game, another character that exists in some other format in some other universe that you're bringing in to the Mythic Legions realm. So this is something that I've done a number of times. I, I very much enjoy doing it. Um, I know there are a number of my fellow customizers that enjoy it as well. And it's, it's a lot of fun to do because you're creating something that is instantly recognizable, especially if you're creating a custom that's based on an iconic character from a very popular franchise. Um, when you see it and when others see it, they immediately can make a connection to it because they recognize the inspiration that it came from. So when I create these type of customs, there are some uh, steps that I use. There are some tricks that I use along the way to create customs that I think work really well in Mythic Regions while still maintaining those iconic design elements of the character that I'm looking to recreate. So I'm going to talk about those here. And in all honesty, I have spoken about this before. I did a whole Mythic Conversations episode on this exact topic, but I figured it would be fun to kind of distill that information down into this short video here. So let's get started. And I'm going to get started by showing probably my most popular uh, Mythic Legions tribute figure. And that's the one we see right here, which is the tribute I did to the iconic Star Wars bounty hunter of Boba Fett. So looking at this character here, if you if you know who Boba Fett is, I'm sure you look at this character and you know what I was trying to represent. And that's important. That's what we're trying to achieve. And what I will tell you is whenever I'm doing one of these tribute type customs, the first step that I do is I grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and I start writing down the iconic design elements of that character. Every character has certain things about them that are instantly recognizable. That when someone mentions that character, it's immediately what you picture in your head. Those are the elements we want to start with. Because remember, I'm not trying to create a Boba Fett custom here that looks exactly like Boba Fett. I'm not trying to create a Star Wars Black Series custom, something that's going to sit really well in a Star Wars collection. I want something that sits really well in the Mythic Legions collection, but maintains those design elements. So Boba Fett comes from a galaxy far, far away, not from the realm of Mythos. How do I translate that character into a creation that works in the realm of mythos, right? So let's talk about Boba Fett. First iconic thing you have to go for is the helmet, right? That helmet with, you know, the red T with the black T in the middle of it, that T visor type helmet is the most iconic aspect of Boba Fett. So that is where I started. Looking at the Mythic Legions library, what part can I use to represent that? Well, this particular helmet, which was used on Gorgo Aetherblade and a number of other characters over the years, that's a perfect place to start because it kind of has that T-shape, right? But it's not so, you know, sci-fi oriented. It doesn't look exactly like Boba Fett. It's stylized in such a way that it clearly works in Mythic Legions, but painted correctly, it gives you that Boba Fett feel. So I painted it with the green colors of the you know iconic Boba Fett armor. I scuffed it up so it looks battle-worn like Boba Fett is often shown to be. Then around that black key visor, I painted some red highlights to recreate that Boba Fett look. Right there, doing that, I'm so far along. I'm so far along the, the path of making this look like Boba Fett. Now, the rest of that armor, right? So carrying that armor color throughout the rest of the body, that is something that Boba Fett is known for. If you look on the right here, you can see some of the other armor colors I used where he's got, you know, yellow on, you know, parts of his shoulders and on his knees to represent the armor that he would wear. Um, and then if you look in that shoulder pad, that's another really iconic piece of the Boba Fett armor, right? He's got that skull painted on his shoulder on you know, the, the normal character design. It's an iconic skull. People wear t-shirts of it. They have tattoos of it. When you see that skull, that is a symbol for Boba Fett. So I didn't just want to paint a skull on the armor. I wanted to represent that 
in a little bit more of a three-dimensional way to really bring it into Mythic Legions. So you can see the photo on the right. I used one of those skull toppers from the top of an orc axe drilled a few holes in the side and added those horns to create a three-dimensional representation of a similar type skull. And then I used some of the Mythic Legion's belts to look like it was kind of lashed onto his armor there. So that's another piece of the Boba Fett armor, the Boba Fett character design that I've brought in. One last one I'll point out is Boba Fett has a jetpack with a big missile out of the back, another very iconic part of the Boba Fett design, especially if you're, you know, were a, a child of the late 70s and early 80s as I was, if you had that original Boba Fett figure, it had that big red missile in his back. You know, there's the classic story of the missile firing Boba Fett prototypes and all that. That missile is clearly a pot of the Boba Fett design, the iconic Boba Fett armor. So while a missile would be inappropriate in Mythic Legions, you can look and see in the photo on the left, you can see that sword that's kind of coming up off his back there. What I did was I used one of the Mythic Legion, you know, big long swords, and the way that handle looks, it actually has a very similar shape to the missile that Boba Fett has coming out of his back. So by putting that sword kind of in a belt in the back, it works really well as just a knight, you know, and a, a you know, character with a sword kind of lashed to his back, but it also represents that iconic missile coming up off the back of the character. Now, if you look at this character here, just with those design elements, the armor colors, the helmet, that iconic T design, the skull on the shoulder, the, the sword at the back, those elements alone allow you to look at this and immediately know that this is Boba Fett. Whenever I show this off at, you know, Legion's Con or, you know, online on my Instagram, people immediately, I don't even have to say that it's a tribute to Boba Fett, they clearly will see that. And that's because I've tapped into those iconic design elements of the character and translated them into Mythic Legion. So that would be the first step. When you're going to do a tribute, write down just a couple. You don't have to hit them all right? But write down a couple of the iconic design elements of the character you're looking to represent and find ways to integrate them into your custom. I'll show another one, another example of that principle from yet another non-fantasy, you know, non-sword and sandals type property. And that's the tribute I did to the G.I. Joe character of Zartan. So you look at that here, Obviously, this has those iconic Zartan-like characteristics. So we did this for Boba Fett. What are the iconic Zartan-like characteristics, right? Well, Zartan has that, you know, the hood that he wears and the armor color, the, the costume color he wears with those maroons and silvers. And of course, Zartan has that face paint. So that iconic black face paint around his eyes, that would be one of the classic aspects of the Zartan character. Also, a lot of times they depict him as an archer in the comic books and so forth. So that was another element I brought in. So I wanted him to have a hood. So I used an elf ranger head here. I actually popped the elf ranger head out. Um, it's not meant to come out. But if you actually look at one of my previous videos, I did a video about removing parts that aren't meant to be removed, specifically removing stuff like that, that head from that Mythic Legion's hood so you can better paint the hood and the head. I did that here. I wanted to repaint that hood and I wanted to repaint that head to include that eye makeup. Now, that's not all I did here, though. The other aspect of Zartan that's really important is not necessarily a visual aspect, okay? We got the, we tapped into the visual aspects, but there are other elements of these characters that aren't represented necessarily visually. So with Zartan, he's a master of disguise. He's known for being able to change his, his looks and his voice and his mannerisms to completely and expertly imitate somebody else um, so he can infiltrate the G.I. Joes and so forth. Looking at different fantasy races, looking at Dungeons and Dragons, I stumbled on a race called a changeling. And it said that changelings are able to do that. They change every aspect of their, of their appearance and mannerisms to mimic something else. Um, in fact, the changeling race is very often distrusted in Dungeons and Dragons because you never know if the person you're engaging with really is one of your loved ones or if it's a changeling in disguise. So I thought about all of those traits of that race 
and they matched so expertly to Zartan, you know, being the leader of the Dreadnoughts, being kind of a distrustful, very criminal type character. All those things together, I said, that's a perfect connection. So not only did I hit on some of those iconic design elements for the character, but I also found a way to expand on the character a little bit to bring him into the realm of mythos with uh, a race, with some you know attributes that really did make sense in that fantasy format. So this is my changeling version of the G.I. Joe character of Zartan. Now, another principle you can do that I did with Zartan specifically is think bigger, think beyond just that one character and start working on series. If you're doing tributes to characters from Star Wars or G.I. Joe, there's a ton of other characters that you can do as well. So when I was working on that, that Zartan, it was actually part of a larger series I did that I called instead of G.I. Joe or Real American Hero. I called it Sir Joseph, a real Mythonian hero. And you can see the results of that little experiment in front of you now. Um, on the left, I have all of my Cobra type characters, my Cobra tributes I did. That's Baroness, Destro, Cobra Commander, Zartan, Storm Shadow, and Firefly. And then on the right, we have the Heroic Joe tributes I did. Snake Eyes, Scarlet, Rock and Roll, and of course, the leader as that heroic looking knight, Duke. So if you look at all of these characters, the principles that I just mentioned, both for Boba Fett and Zartan, carry through here. But I took some liberties. So for instance, you know, some of these are very, very straightforward. You know, you look at the Baroness. So Baroness is often depicted as having, you know, black armor with the red Cobra logo right in the chest. She's got black hair. She's got glasses. Um, that was a really easy one to do. I just used a Vampire Legion builder, painted a little bit of the armor motif in the center red, and then I used one of those un unhelmeted heads from a Delphina figure. That alone really gave me a convincing Baroness. But what about the glasses, right? The glasses are an iconic piece of that character design. Well, this is a lesson where sometimes things don't always work. I tried some different glasses on the Baroness and they looked really bad. They looked really, really cheesy. They looked out of place in the realm of mythos. So that's another lesson I would offer for you is don't feel like you have to be totally, you know, true to every element of the character design because there will be some that don't work. And it's okay to leave some on the shelf and not bring it into your custom if you feel they don't work. You look at the rock and roll. So rock and roll, that was a total rethinking as opposed to, you know, a barbarian with, you know, blonde hair and big weapons. I could have gone that way. Instead, I wanted to make him a dwarf. So I made him a big dwarf gunner type character, still have, you know, that iconic, uh, you know, blonde here. But instead of it being on his head, I did it as a beard here. So you can have some fun with these characters as well and rethink the way they're going to look. Cobra Commander. So Cobra Commander being the leader of Cobra, the leader of the serpents, um, there have been times that they've represented him with much more snake-like features. So I really leaned into that. And there's a race in Dungeons and Dragons called the Yanti that are totally serpent characters. So I reimagined him as being a serpent, using the green bones from a scaphoid figure to actually be kind of more like, you know, green, uh, green limbs that are part of this, this snake-like character. So you can have a lot of fun with these type of tributes by following these principles and just expanding beyond them. Speaking of expanding, let's look at another series that I did. When Avon of Decay first was released, and that was the first time that we had access to the female body parts, um, Right around that time, I saw someone post some artwork about reimagining Disney princesses as different kinds of fantasy warriors. And I love the artwork, but more so, I love the rethinking of these iconic characters. And it's very much in the spirit of the characters, right? Because Disney took a lot of those characters from, you know, fairy tales and myth and legend, and they did a rethink of them for their animated specials. And in some cases, live action specials that they've now done after the animated. So in the spirit of that rethinking, I took a lot of those iconic Disney princesses and I did a series that I called, you know, Mythonian princesses, um, reimagining them as, you know, Mythic Legions characters. And here's a couple that I did here, a couple kind of pairings I 
did. So on the left, we've got my pairing of Beauty and the Beast, which is a much more straightforward pairing. Uh, you know, Beauty is often depicted in, you know, like the, the yellows and the greens uh, with the brown here. So very much just kind of tapped into the Gwendolyn Heavens brand armor, some of the Artemis silver cord pieces to recreate that type of character as, as Belle. Um, but on the left, on the right, I should say, that's more of a rethink. So that is my version of Jasmine and Raja from Aladdin. Now, in Aladdin, Raja is Jasmine's pet tiger. He's not an anthropomorphic character, but I actually imagined him as an anthropomorphic character, reimagining him as, you know, not only her confidant, but really an advisor to her. So I created him wanting to be kind of, you know, her protector, her confidant, um, using a Kaworos head and repainting it to be like a tiger to make an anthropomorphic character of that particular that particular individual. Um, with Jasmine, obviously she's a princess, but at the start of the story, you know, she's often sneaking out of the palace to go and experience what life is like outside of the palace walls. Um, I imagined, hey, what if she wasn't just sneaking out uh, to get a sense of freedom and to see what life is like, but what if she actually had a whole second life? What if she was Jasmine, Princess of Thieves? So instead of Aladdin, Prince of Thieves, I'm, I'm, I'm spinning that and I'm thinking Jasmine, Princess of Thieves, what if she really runs this total, you know, crime underworld as part of, you know, the, the area outside of the palace where she's the princess. That's a really interesting kind of evolution of the character. So when I design this particular custom, that's what I'm imagining. I didn't tap into a lot of the aspects of Jasmine here. I really just took the idea of a little piece of what she did in the story and almost kind of almost treated it like Marvel what if, right? Where I, if I change this one little thing, what happens? And that's one another thing that you can do is you can take not only the visual aspects of the characters and build on them, not only the storyline characters and build on them, but you can go totally in your own direction to create something that is very, very uniquely yours. So all different cool things that you can do there. A um, couple more things that I'll show you here. Um, you don't have to do super iconic characters. You can do stuff that's somewhat obscure, right? So one of my favorite memories of childhood is watching all of those classic Rankin Bass holiday specials around Christmas time. One of my favorites was The Year Without a Santa Claus that had these two awesome characters called the Miser Brothers, the Heat Miser and the Cold Miser. Um, very fun characters that I looked at those just the ideas of this heat miser and cold miser and said, how would I recreate that in Mythic Legion? So you can see in front of you here that I rethought the heat miser as kind of like a lava dwarf while I rethought the cold miser as a frost demon. And being able to build on those ideas and create characters that very much, I think, work in the realm of mythos, but are tied in even loosely to the characters that they are being influenced by. Um, unlike the Boba Fett or the Zartan that have very specific iconic design elements, these are much looser. You know, really all I'm tying into is the idea of a fiery type character and the idea of a cold type or snowy, icy type character. But they work really well in Mythic Legions. And if you know Heat Miser, Cold Miser, and you see these two especially together, you're very likely going to say, is that the Miser Brothers from, you know, Year Without a Santa Claus, and it absolutely is. So don't just think about the iconic popular properties. Don't just think about versions of Master of the Universe characters or Lord of the Rings characters or, you know, Game of Thrones characters um, or even outside of fantasy properties like Star Wars or something. Really expand and, and think about properties that you love that may be obscure and how you can bring some of your favorite characters into Mythic Legions. So the last thing that I'll show you here, I just mentioned Master Universe, um, because there is a precedent in Mythic Legions for tribute figures already, right? 
the power con debut figures are clearly tributes to mythic god to masters of the universe you know we've gotten tributes to man at arms and skeletor and he-man and so forth um very very cool some of the most popular figures in the line because once again like i said at the start of this video people relate to them because they recognize something already. There's a lot of new Mythic fans that come into the line because of the PowerCon figures, because they're already Masters of the Universe fans, and they see one of these tribute figures, and they immediately recognize it as a character they know and love, and they say, you know what? I'd love to add that to my collection. And if you collect Mythic Legions, you know, once you buy one or two, you're probably hooked. When you realize the quality of these figures, you're like, I need more. Even I need more outside of just the tribute figures, all these cool looking characters. So great way to bring people in. Um, I tend to not display the Master of the Universe tribute figures as that format. And it's simply because I have a display of Masters of the Universe characters elsewhere, and I don't really feel like I need two Skeletors and two He-Man and so forth in my collection. Um, so often what I do with those characters is I use them as base figures for other customs. But there have been some exceptions. There are a few characters that I just really like them. And when I saw the Mythic Legions representation, as cool as they were, there's obviously limitations, right? There are certain parts, whenever they do these tributes, they have to use figures from their existing parts library. So there's going to be some compromises along the way. So there have been times where I've said, well, if I could redo that character, and I'm not bound to those limitations of only being able to use the parts library. I can use custom parts, parts from other toy lines. I can do whatever I want to really rethink that character and make what I think is an even more extreme version of that, that tribute. So I'll show you an example of that. Um, and this is my version of the classic Mass Universe character of Trapjaw, which was, of course, the Mythic Legion's Chronoff figure. So when I was growing up, Trap Joe was one of my favorite toys. I loved swapping out the arm attachments, you know, the, the laser pistol, the hook, the claw. There was a super fun play pattern for that figure. So with the Kronoff figure, it doesn't have those arm attachments. Obviously, he comes with, you know, a mace, like a, like a flail, I should say, a flail type weapon and a sword and an axe and so forth. So he's got different weapons that he can wield, but it's not actually integrated into his lower arm um, because that's not something that we have in Mythic Legion. So when I got Kronoff, I immediately said, you know, what? I want to rethink this character. I want to do something different with it. I want to do something that I think is closer to the character it's meant to represent. So back to the beginning what are the iconic aspects of trap jaw well certainly the jaw right his head with that big wicked looking metal jaw and then that big weapon arm that big mechanical arm that ends in some crazy different weapon attachments so just with those two additions just taking the chronoff figure because that's all this is this is just a chronoff figure with some details painted on his legs and so forth and then an upgrade to the head and to the arm. I use a gigantic claw weapon that you can see on the left here. That is from an old uh, Spawn Cygor figure. Attach that right to the bottom of the lower arm with a little blue tack. I use a really big, you know, shoulder armor piece from a World of Warcraft Arthas figure. Um, if you check out my previous video where I talk about my five favorite fodder figures to use for customizing. I talk about that Warcraft Arthas figure, and that's what I used here. Um, and then that helmet was cobbled together from a variety of places. It's partially a 2.0 skeleton figure with that helmet, but I actually cut that jaw, that metal jaw piece, off of a World of Warcraft a Headless Horseman figure, which is ironically a super expensive figure that I got, I kid you not, largely just to do this custom. So a lot of different, you know, uh, aspects of customizing that you see here, but for the purposes of this video, talking about tribute figures, what I wanna show you is that you literally can take even tribute figures that already exist and add your spin on them, add more to them. Hope you found this enjoyable. Hope you found this inspirational. Hope you're thinking right now, what characters, what iconic characters do I really like or what obscure characters do I really connect with that I want to bring into the realm of mythos? Follow some of the steps that I talked about here. The iconic 
elements of that design, try to bring some of those in. Um, think about if it's part of a group, building out multiple customs as part of a little series. Think about if you can take elements of the character that aren't necessarily design elements, but are thematic or storyline elements and build on that and bring that in in a really cool way, or even just take a very small part of that character's story and expand on it in a really extreme way to create a totally new rethink of that character. Those are all principles that you can use when you are building tribute figures. Can't wait to see what you make with those. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy videos like this, please give it a like. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments section. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the video. Until next time, I can't wait to see what you make.